Today we're going to start talking about objective and we're going to move from drawing techniques per se to content. And if you're drawing your portraits, you're a storyteller, whether you know it or not. So you're communicating by visual means. If you want your portraits to really start standing out, you know, as much fun as it is to just jump in and start drawing with all that excitement and as good as that is, it's important to do that. It's also important to start becoming a little more thoughtful up front and do some planning. And that takes a little bit of discipline. The learning never stops, okay? So let me just tell you that. There's always more. So let's dive into this. Basically, what we want is people to look at our work. You know, we want to engage the audience and draw them into our work with storytelling, camera work and composition, drawing techniques, let those things start to do the work for you. Now, what's the problem? Basically, the problem is we need eyes on our work on social media, in the gallery, or in publication. And so we're trying to draw or paint something that we and others really want to look at, right? Another way to say it, we can't get or keep our viewers' attention. So this is a problem. And how are we going to solve that? Well, we're going to find ways to engage viewers and keep them looking and coming back by creating empathy with our characters, with our portraits, with our drawings, somehow engaging the audience. So we need a procedure for that. And I call this orchestrating your portraits. Imagine that you're a conductor or imagine what a conductor does. They stand in the front and they conduct each section of the orchestra and telling each section when to play, when to stop playing, how loud to play, how soft to play. And they're do doing this all by auditory means. And you're going to do the same thing only using visual means. You're the art director. That's the corollary to the conductor in the symphony. You're the art director and that's your job. So there's four main ways I'd like to suggest to draw the audience in. So if you imagine your portrait in the center here, represented by these puzzle pieces, each puzzle piece making up that silhouette of a head is one of these four ways that we're going to look at. The first one is to know your why. And you could say maybe that's 40% of what you need to consider. It varies, but we'll just go with 40%. Number two is art direction. And where are you going to use camera angle and composition techniques to do the work for you? Then there's drawing techniques. Maybe that's 20%. And the final one is posing. Maybe 10%. It's using body language to convey your message is essentially what that is. All right, so let's dive into these a little more deeply. Okay, number one, finding your why to set things up for you. You're going to start asking questions to yourself at the beginning, like, what's my objective? What's my reason for doing this? What do I want to say? What's my message? Is it just pure enjoyment? You're sitting down, just drawing, loving it. Okay, that's fine, that's valid. Is it study? You're taking something like color, anatomy, or composition, and focusing on that, on this particular drawing. That's also fine and valid and necessary. Is it a professional commission? Is it work, right? Is it um, something you need to do for someone else in exchange for money? Also needed and essential. Is it a portrait for a loved one, right? It's a gift, it's a card. It's something that uh, is close to your heart, closer than let's say a professional commission piece. Could be just pure creative exploration. All these things are really important and something to consider and each one has uh, a different objective. And depending on what that is, you'll be able to achieve that objective a little bit better. Okay, so if we're visual storytellers, we have to tackle this question, what story am I trying to tell? The first thing you gotta do is create a backstory and narrative. You probably heard of some of these words, maybe like backstory. It doesn't have to be anything big like writing a novel. But it's just some things that you can use for yourself to springboard off of to start creating and being creative with your portraits. So asking who, what, where, when, and why. 
or just who is this character? What is this character like? What's their personality, right? And where are they? What are they wearing? What's the environment that they're in? Because your portrait will have some kind of background and you can give a hint of that. And mind you, a lot of these things, um, they, they're for creative artists as well, like concept artists doing character design. So this can be good for just straight up traditional portraiture or something like concept art. You can add accessories and props. So for example, you know, you might have your traditional painting there or something that looks very traditional and you add a, a sci-fi helmet to it and give it a twist and give it some interest. So something like a helmet, a gun, an earring, a scarf, a scar, just adding props can start to engage the audience in a meaningful way. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on Art Direction Secrets. It's the first installment. There will be more. And I cover all this and much more in my portrait drawing course called Mastering the Art of the Portrait. You can find it here on drawjuice.com. And I created the course to help people become better artists, better portrait artists all the way around. So it's an excellent course, excellent resource. So go check it out. Also, if you wouldn't mind, like and subscribe to the channel. If you like what you heard, ring the bell so you won't miss a thing. And I will see you in the next video.